Okay, let's let's continue here. Let's finish the structural analysis. Then we're going to get into the exegetical significance. We have here three of these actions, and then the basis for this is to be found in really. There's going to be two reasons here. So we have first we have an action was formed, and what does that refer to? Creation. Creation. Excellent. So the first thing is that Adam was formed first. So Adam is the object. The time reference is, is here. And then the second object is Eve. So who is the actor here? Who is the actor? Yahweh. Ah, come on. Does everyone see that? So Coming back to Mark's question, and again, I'm not saying Mark's saying this. I'm saying that he's he's you know debating with people who are saying these things. So the actor is the Lord, and this is the the triune God, all three working together inseparably, Father, Son, Spirit. We see this in Genesis one, Genesis one and two. But so the significance here is God could have, in His sovereignty, created them at the same time. God could have created Eve first and made the woman to be the one in authority. He can do whatever he wants, but that's not what he has ordained. So it's it's very hard for, for me when people say, well, what you know, you're limiting the sovereignty of God. No, God's sovereignty limits his God's sovereignty limits his will, right? What he ordains is the limiting factor, and he has acted in time. And so coming back to the catechism and confessions. The, the decrees of God are carried out in his work of creation and providence. Go on our website and check out uh, the, the Westminster Catechism questions. It says that there. And then there's verses for that. And we see that literally here. Why are women not permitted to teach or to exercise authority? Because of the created order. So number one basis You only thought that there was one reason here, right? Uh, number one, Adam was formed first, the created order. So let's be very specific here. And this is exegetical. So what we're dealing with here is the, the created order. So is let's ask the question. So I'm, I'm trying to get us into the text. Is that the only... Is that the only reason, or is there another reason? Are there one or two reasons here? And if not, what are they? The transgression and the sec he was deceived, and then who was the transgressor? So there is a second reason here, basis number two. Does everyone see that? So there's really two reasons. Adam was not deceived. Adam was not deceived. Rather, the woman being deceived so this is a a time reference time action being deceived had became i what does the legacy have julian uh, let me check for it was I, adam who was first formed and then eve and it was not adam who was deceived but the woman being deceived fell into trespass Okay, so they have this word of fell, and then the word is into, trespass. Yes. ESV has became, I think, just became a transgressor. The craziest thing is the Greek literally says in transgression. That's the literal. And this, this in would infer a, a state or sphere. Is everyone tracking there with me? which is quite, in one sense, different. Is everyone tracking there with that? The woman being deceived had became, literally had became in transgression, in a state of transgression, in a sphere or a realm of transgression, okay? Now, look let's look closely here. The adversative relationship is, the difference is between these two. What is the difference? Anybody, let's think about this deeply. What's the fundamental difference between this? This is a contrast relationship. Weakness. 
What do you mean by witness, Kuya Boboy? Uh, in terms of the in the in the current language, we use it weakness as our sinful. oh weakness weakness oh no yeah that's I like that so yeah. so no excellent I I thought you said witness no that's excellent so let's put it here weakness. weakness. What I'm going to say is very is in one sense strong, in another sense it's not, and I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. And every one of us has weaknesses. Men have weaknesses. They're more susceptible to weaknesses than women in other areas. So this is not to say that, oh, look at this or look at that, you know, to put down. Okay. But the reality is, is let's be clear here. Let's move the other direction. Okay. Adam was not deceived. The woman has this weakness of deception. This moves back to the creation order. And then this comes back to a, the, the, the permitting of, of teaching, exercising authority. Is everyone tracking there so we can work backwards? So this deception or, or, or deceit is that of weakness. And what I want to argue here, this might be debated. I feel that it's clear, but it could be debated maybe, that there is a, an issue with nature. Is everyone tracking with what I'm saying? So, so the first is the created order. The second is, is the nature of women. Is everyone tracking there? Now, maybe there's going to be pushback. Maybe, maybe, this, maybe this might make you upset. I promise you by the end of this discussion, I think that you'll change your perspective. I think we'll all agree. Let's talk for a moment. Are men and women the same? Let's, let's do... Let's come down here. So let's do uh, differences and similarity with uh, differences with men and women. What are the differences between men and women? Biological. Biological, great. Right brain, left brain. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Expound. Well, I, I don't really know. Uh, you know, science has discovered this. The science did not invent it, but science has found, uh, has come to understand that there's a difference in the brain structure. There's a difference between how women and men handle information. So they came up with this thing called, you know, who was uh, was left brain, left left brain and right brain. I I can't, I can't exactly uh, remember who who is which, but yeah. I think I gotcha. science has discovered, has learned that man. Um, has a tendency by nature uh, to be more um, critical, uh, to be less emotional. And no, women... that's great. That's great. So let's write, write, write. Let's write this down here. So we have, we have uh, men are more um, logical. Oh yeah, logical. W uh, women, well, whereas women are more uh, emotional. These are not, these are not pros and cons. These are differences. Okay. Someone who's purely logical and not emotional. That is not in a good, that is not a good pos position to be. If you're purely logical and you have no emotion, typically men are more logical. Women are more emotional. Emotions are good for empathy, for caring. You need to be more emotional to care for people. You need to be more logical to make hard decisions. Physical strength. Uh, yeah. Physical strength. Yeah, yeah. Physical strength. Is, uh, generally, um, men are stronger. Women. This is this is stronger strength, and for women, it's they can bear children. Men cannot bear children. Men cannot give life. Well, in the U.S., they can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you say that? Oh. <laughs> My goodness, you guys probably think we're crazy. You in the Philippines, you're like, what are these crazy nut jobs doing? That's true. From, from a biological perspective. So biologically. So just for the for the YouTube viewers, and we're speaking specifically of X, Y, X, X chromosomes. So biologically, you know. And this is where I'm going to bring in, you know, people that might not like this video. We can disagree on gender and definitions of gender. I would, I would strongly disagree. 
but we're dealing here biologically. Biologically, men are biologically stronger. They have more testosterone and, and um, their bone density is stronger. They have, you know, they're able to, to, to run faster. They're able to do um, more exercise. They're able to lift things. And women bear children. Men cannot bear, bear, no one that has a XY chromosome can bear a child. So we're speaking here purely biologically, okay? And of course, we would say gender is the same as biology, but regardless, we can all agree, biologically, there is a fundamental difference. What else? I had here, men are more aggressive, which is not a good thing. That has to be controlled. Women are more caring. And that is a good thing. And and this this uh, comes go ahead yeah go ahead go ahead. Brother Kent said in the chat that men are more likely to command and demand respect. That's what Brother Kent said. Command and demand, and then women are better at following. Right. Yeah. I, I and you want that... And you want to know something though? This is better in in following the Christ the the, the Great Shepherd. So this is why. Men are very mint. There's a higher percentage of women that are believers than men. I, I don't want to speak definitively, but I'm like 95% sure if you look at the actual faithfulness of women versus men, there's probably a gray area there, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure if you looked at it, you know, um, there are a lot more women that are faithful and, and <laughs> than men. And that probably comes to that command independence. Men are independent that 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 innate nature from Adam to be to do it to go at it yourself. All of these then come to what? What's the big takeaway here? Are men and women egalitarian or complementary in these areas? Definitely um, complementary. There's definitely there's definitely complementary. And these move towards. We could also move this into the the spiritual realm as well. Spiritual talents in the sense that women are more often caring for the, the, the needs. They are, they are showing love more than men. You know, men are wise and discerning. They, they, they slay the wolves in sheep's clothing more than the women. You know, they're, and so that's part of the aggressiveness. They protect the flock. And so then so then if you notice here, there is this, and we'll come back to this, there is this shepherding idea here. Now, Christ has both, and maybe you're going to say, oh, that's why we're Italian. I'll disagree, and we'll look at some passages. But there is this shepherding that requires, that requires caring, it requires command, it requires strength, it requires logic. Um, it does require some emo you need to be emotionally connected with the sheep. But at the end of the day, we're going to look at at, at a, some fundamental passages, whether it's Christ, the husband, or then the, the, the pastor, and how these are at the end of the day designed for, these at the end of the day are designed for the, the men. Is everyone tracking? Let's take a pause. Maybe, maybe someone's left. I don't know. Um, is everyone tracking here with this? I have. I have at the beginning, my, uh, Tim, at the beginning, the, the woman was created by God to be a partner, a suitable yes. partner. He is described as the suitable partner. Yes. So that's Genesis 2.18. So what's your, is, is that just a comment or you want to add a follow-up? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the, in other words, that's the original design for women. To be a partner to the men. So it's complementary, not egalitarian. Yeah. And I posted a video looking at Genesis 1 26 to 28. We also have Genesis 1 26 to 28. We also have the idea of dominion, which is given both to male and female. So this is not to say that. Women do not exercise authority over creation. They do. Man and women were designed as one entity in marriage, one, one flesh to exercise dominion. And within this structure, 
you have male headship and female partnership. The federal head is the male. Is everyone tracking there with me on that? Is everyone tracking there with me? Any comments or questions? I have a question, Pass. So yeah, go ahead. it's regarding uh, at the time of the temptation we're in, if ate the forbidden fruit. So I just like the other elder. So she said that, so I would ask you this. What would you say about this statement that, so doesn't this disqualify Adam from the, from the leadership path? Because Adam was there when Eve was tempted. Why then didn't Adam enforce his leadership qualities unto Eve when he yeah. knows that he needs to lead and act yeah. his partners? So, so this, comes, this comes down to what exactly? So I used to believe that Adam was passive and he was, you know, he was passive and, and, and that, I mean, it, he, he doesn't say anything. So at the end of the day, we don't know about that. You know, I've changed my position. This is my interpretation. I, I, because elsewhere it'll talk about, it'll talk about, um, this will be, and we're going to go to this passage for a second. Okay. So this is, I, I want to say that this is not to see, but rebellion. Adam rebelled against, against God. So Adam, and this is my interpretation. This is not black and white. We're going to go to a passage where it clearly shows rebellion because there's a comparison with, with Israel. Um, my perspective is that Adam wasn't passive and just like a weak man. I think Adam was, was rebelling and he wanted to see um, what would happen because if Eve ate, you would surely die. So he did not say anything. It was almost as if Eve was his guinea pig. And, and this shows terrible leadership. Don't, don't misunderstand. But I think that he rebelled, and what, but, but he was letting the woman eat first to see what would happen. And when nothing happened, then he took. It was clearly an act of rebellion. There was no deception. He knew what he was doing. And as leaders, I would say any leader that can be easily deceived. So this is where I would say, practically speaking, because of this, if, if there's a leader that is easily deceived, he's very passive. I would say they should not be, that man should not be in leadership. Okay. So this is not to say all men, all men should be in leadership. It's that all men, that's one of the qualifications, but there is still the, the, these need for discipline, for blamelessness. We're going to, we're going to look at that broader context in a moment. D is that, is that answering your question a little bit? Okay, so let's go ahead now. Let's go ahead and let us look at a, a parallel text, Hosea 6, 7. Hosea 6, 7. But like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. There they dealt, there they dealt faithlessly with me. Do a cr screenshot here. So here we have the, the, tr the, the, the transgressed the simple act of transgression and here they dealt faithlessly this is that of not trusting independent rebelling if you're not trusting you're rebelling rebellion and actually the broader context of, of hosea 6 7 is that israel is rebelling Right. So Gilead is it. So, so look at this. So, so the, the comparison here, the comparison here is between these two. This is, this is Adam. This is Israel. And then look here, Israel, Gilead is a city of evildoers tracked with blood robbers. Do you, do you see that? So this is not, and, and the comparison is that of like Adam. So this is not a, this is not a, Adam was deceived. He didn't really know. He didn't really know. Adam was passive. He just didn't have the strength to do what was right. No, Adam was a strong man and he gave God the middle finger and he said, I'm going to break the covenant. Okay. And so, um, and he, and he brought everyone into sin and Adam is not qualified to be a leader and he was re rejected from being the leader. Okay. So, th but, but this is to say that intrinsic to, to the created order and intrinsic the way God created man is that man is to lead and women are to be his help meet. They're not to exercise role 
roles in the church? I've always held something similar. Um, one thing I typically say, because people get surprised when they get to the verse that says, oh, but it was not Adam was deceived, but Eve was deceived. Everybody's like, hey, are you saying women are idiots? Are you saying we're, we're yeah. stupid? No. Well, what I say to them is, no, no, no. Adam and Eve both sinned. But it says here that Adam was not deceived into sin, yeah. but Eve was deceived into sin. Yeah. If anything, I say to them, that means God is expecting a higher level of responsibility upon mankind because Adam was not ignorant in what he did, but Eve was. So I even think that also, you know, that also relieves some responsibility from Eve, given that she was, you know, submissive to what happened instead of being as culpable as Adam. So I always say, um, all the more does Adam get the responsibility for safeguarding yeah. the word of God, which he yeah. was supposed to teach to you. Yep. So no, I, I, Julian, phenomenal comment, and and we, we yeah exactly. And so we would want to say is, women are more innocent and they're more caring. It it's not it's not in one sense, in one sense it's weakness, in another sense it's not. Adam's worse. We are more susceptible if we if we are more prone to 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 anger, to violence, and to rebellion, that's not a positive trait. <laughs> that's worse, like what you're saying. And so the opposite here is more of faithfulness. Women are typically more faithful than men, right? Uh, someone who is more innocent and trusting is going to be typically more faithful. So this is, again, not that women are weak as in they're, they're some way deficient, it's that they're wired differently. So from, from a physiological, from a psychological perspective, they are wired. God has created them different. He's created them complementary to us. Women have the most important role in the world. They, they produce life. They care for the next generation. We don't have time to discuss this, but this is why the, the way that women are saved is through the training of their children. Not that that is earning their salvation, but that it's revealing their faith and their trust in the Lord God to then train the next generation. And it's also to say that women do have a role in teaching, right? They are to teach their children, to bring them up in faith and love. Let's just look at that passage, this, this succeeding passage here. So it's not to say there is no, women should never teach. It's, it's a, a very specific mm -hmm. context. So uh, second, uh, first Timothy two fifteen. Uh, yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love, holiness, and self control. And so here, looking at this, the 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 woman will be saved through childbearing, and the the idea there is that their children continue in in faith, in love, holiness, self control. Who's teaching here? Who is teaching? Who is the one teaching? The mother. The, the mother. mother. The woman. This is, this is in the family, in the home. So this is not to say that women ought not to ever teach or that they don't have a role. It's in the very specific position. And so let's go back now to this context here. This is in the very specific context of Let's, let's, let's highlight this and then let's unpack this. Okay. It's in the very, to teach, to exercise authority. Okay. Let's look at the, so we have one, two. So this, this remain here is with reference to authority and teaching. Okay. Let's look at the, at the broader context of, of Timothy. Okay. So when we come back up to here, the broader context, I, I desire then that everywhere men should pray, lifting, holding hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also men, women should adorn themselves, respectable apparel with modesty and self-control. So let's just look here. We're going to highlight this. So the activity is that of, of prayer. And then this is giving the, the means. And then also likewise, the women and their means are uh, respectable apparel, modesty, self-control, 
And then look here now, what's this action? So men and women pray. This is for men and women. Okay. Now, this is where I will not be black and white. Some people say women should never pray in a corporate setting. I disagree. I, that's, that's a gray error. This text would not say that because the specific context is let a woman learn. So a woman is to learn uh, in all submissiveness. So we have, we have learning in the preceding context. And then here we have, so, so in the broader context, we have learning, teaching, authority, right? And, 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 and a woman should not be involved in this. And this is in a corporate context. Clearly it's corporate. I'm tracking there. So, so, so the, the silence is not never, we've seen that they're to train their children. It's not never in the church. It's in the specific area of public teaching and leadership. Okay. So this is where some people will take this strongly. I don't. So it, could, could a woman could a woman pray in public worship? I think that's a gray area. Could, could a woman participate in worship, leading of worship, you know, singing, playing instruments? I think they can. The, 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 in this context, now we'd have to do we'd have to look at other passages in Corinthians. Fair enough. We have to look at other, you know, the the, the biblical theological. Fair enough. But in this context, you cannot use this context for women to be silent. And, and people have done that. They've said women cannot speak at all. They're to sit in the pews and not speak at all. The specific context is in this, in these areas. Is everyone tracking? Let's, 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 let's make a, a follow-up question or a comment. Is everyone tracking how this is very Malakas in one area, but not as Malakas as people would have you believe in other areas? Let's, let's make a comment or ask a question. How about, Sir Tim, how about leading a Bible study group? So if it's if it's a if it's a mixed congregation a mi a mixed group my personal perspective could be they should not lead it they can participate they can lead a a, a teens group a, a children's group they could lead a woman's bible study 100% if it was a mixed group of of across the board men and women from the church they can participate i would say that they couldn't lead or, or, or be the teacher. So that would, I would say that would also apply for like adult uh, Sunday school. Um, so this is specifically concerning public corporate worship, a public corporate teaching. Now, some people will just leave it to the morning preaching. Okay, fine. I think you know, maybe I would disagree with the specifics. You'd have to share with me the specifics, but that's really between you and God. You, you could make a case for something like that. D does everyone see? I, I think that this is clear that when it comes to specifically public, corporate, preaching, teaching, and then leading. So then this would speak to both um, preachers, and then the role of elders, elders, pastors. I think this is clear. Is everyone tracking there with me? N now I'm gonna. I want to add one more thing here, and then we can we can further discuss the 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 further clarification or qualification is we looked at the preceding context where women and men were to pray, but women were supposed to learn quietly. Um, so the prayer was not removed from, so from women. So coming back here, men are to lift their hands everywhere and pray. Likewise, also women. Now, again, there could be a debate saying, oh, well, the likewise th th that women should only adorn themselves and, and not be involved in the prayer. We could discuss that. I, again, I think that's a gray area, but we could discuss that um, because then the specific the specific aspect is that of learning quietly. Fair enough. But I, I think that the whole focus here 
is 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 surrounding the the teaching and the preaching. Coming down here, the, the succeeding context, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. So the 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 he, let me just zoom this out a little bit here. So then he, the succeeding context here is you have a clearly a uh, he. So this is masculine, male. He desires a noble task. The husband of one wife, right? And this is why, right? He must be not quarrelsome, gentle, not quarrelsome. Manage, he must manage his own household well. These are all um, male, these are male activities. Manage his own household. So this, the, the whole implication here is this is, this is the job for men. And the reason for him not to be, not to be, a recent convert is the snare of Satan. This is deceit. So do you see how this comes back up to the priestly context? The woman was deceived. So women are more susceptible to deceit. They are more caring. They complement and they, and they provide the comp, the, the complementary aspects that men struggle with. Any comments or questions? Any comments or questions? Pastor Tim, uh, I would like to ask a question, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how about um, Phoebe in the New Testament? Considering that um, Paul was in, I think, was in jail, that he wasn't, she was entrusted to bring the letter, the Romans. Yeah, yeah. And like preach to the local Phoebe. congregation. Phoebe. Yeah. So, so again. This so this is very specific. This does not mean that the, that women cannot evangelize men. This does not mean women cannot share the gospel. Okay, this is very specific. It's in the church. It's in the relationship to corporate. So you have you have the praying in the preceding context. You have the qualifications for elder in the succeeding context. So I would say it's very specific. It's um it's not to say they can't share the gospel in the church. Pre you know. But there, it's a very specific, specific area. Does that make sense, Daniel? Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yes, Pastor Tim. Yeah. So I, I do sir, think. Sir Tim, sir Tim. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Mark. How, how about um, Priscilla? Do we know for certain that she was an elder in the church, or that she taught in the corporate worship of the church? She t she she taught or preached. I I um, no. I think this is where it comes to the scripture interpreting scripture and the, and, and, and the, 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 the confessions actually talk about that, that the unclear, like Phoebe with, um, um, at the end of Romans, your example, um, Mark, it's escaped me for a second in Romans 15, 16. I just think those examples are, are not, they're not very clear. They're unclear. We just don't know enough of the context. Here we have a very clear Christ through his apostle is commanding speci a specific regulation. So I just, you know, I just think it's, I just think that, you know, you, you have to work around. This is very specific. Uh, Tim, if yeah, I may. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think uh, what we're seeing is, um, you know, and this is open, open thrown by egalitarians against complementarians. Yep. That we are saying that women can't do anything at yes. all. Yes, yes, it's We're not, not saying true. that. Yeah, it's not true. So let let me We're let me say that. Yeah, no, I, excellent point, and I agree a hundred percent. I would say that egalitarians do have a point that women have been abused, and they have been they have been removed from any type of talking. So you, you are correct. And good complementarians will say, we're not saying that. And, and good complementarians through the history of the church have also said that. But there has been that abuse aspect that we should not, we should acknowledge that, that women have not. And, and I'll give examples. You know, I've been in, in, in contexts where the women are not even ever called upon to pray. Now I'm saying beyond a very corporate setting where the, the view is they should just never pray if there's mixed company. And I just, I categorically reject that women women should be able to pray and um and there's abuse there so glenn excellent point in the sense that good complementarians don't say that 100% there has been abuse and and that could be in in different contexts some yeah. 
yeah, different context. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Follow and up. on that point, uh, Tim, if I may, just, just additionally, um, I mean, just case in point with what you've said, I consider myself kind of like a soft complementarian because yeah. Yeah. I believe that women can do ministry, especially yes. if they are uh, under a supervision of a yes. pastor. Yes. I mean, in our church, in our local church, a woman yes. leads in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. In our prayer time, uh, Wednesday prayer time, yeah. we have a woman leading yeah. the prayer. And I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. And, um, and, because and, she is doing yeah. that under my authority. Yeah. And so that's and so that's where there's a gray area. So I don't want anyone to misunderstand um, the, the silence, the authority of the teaching is in, in, in my interpretation is very specific. Okay. And so, you know, so there's gray areas like Glenn's sharing. So, you know, we, at the end of the day, you have to wrestle through these things, your church, your leaders have to work through this. I do think it's clear that we cannot take a egalitarian position that Rick Warren is calling for that other egalitarians are calling for. And it's, and, and, and really that, that debate comes down to this. The big thing comes comes down to this. I'm I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna spell it out right now. This is this is concerning the pastorate. That is where the debate comes down to, and this must be maintained. That's the issue. Okay, the pastorate, and and then this this is dealing with the with the sacraments, and also the 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 the, the public preaching in the in the corporate worship. That's what it that that's where we need to draw a hard line on. Is everyone tracking there with me? I, I think that's where we need to be. I just misspelled that. That's where we need to take a hard line on. Now, I'm going to close on this and then we can we can discuss further. I just have I just want to actually we didn't really talk about this. I'm going to put this in the assignments, but but um this word is very malakas. I do not permit. I will add um some text that we can look at later. Look at, um, hold on one second here. Look at um, Matthew, Matthew 8.21. Look at 19.5. And, and then we can look at other, I'll, I'll, I'll add some more. And I'll, I'll, I'll print out this handout and, and I'll add some more. And, and this permit is language used by Moses. Um, Jesus describing the, the law of Moses. This is used to just, so this is describing Moses' commands, and this is used to describe Jesus' commands. So this is this is very this word is not my recommendation is I don't I don't think women should do this. That's not that's not the strength of the word. The word is very malakas. It's in a servant, uh, uh, a servant master relationship and in a legal uh, context, the law of Moses, the commands of Jesus. So it's very Malakas. This is a very Malakas word. Three passages of scripture to, to kind of draw this to a close. And I'm going to slap men around. I'm going to slap men around a little bit, you know, because, um, we have not reverenced and respected women as we ought to. And I want to read three passages of scripture. I, I shouldn't say slap. I mean, it's proverbial. I want to, I want to pull your collar, pull your collar is that we need to be more sensitive to women in our church in our families, our wives. And I want to, I'm going to pull my own collar. I have not been as sensitive to my wife as I ought to be. And, and I, and, and the Lord probably slapped me around. And so I'm at a place now in my ministry where I, I view my wife as I view her as one of the wisest people I know, and I will not make a big decision without her support. So this is not to say we should not consider the counsel of women or they should not be consulted as we make decisions as men. I think that women have incredible wisdom and you see that in the Proverbs 31 woman. And, and, and I am at a place now where I am the man of my house. I am the man of my ministry. I will make the final decision, but I will 100% consult my wife or other critical women that are involved in the ministry. And if, and if they are concerned, if there's a concern or they offer advice, I, I consider it because they are a help meet. They're not just my assistant. They are a help meet to, God, to, to, to help us make decisions, especially in the areas of, of caring for children, of, of, of caring for, for people. So I really want to stress that, that women have a critical role to play and we should be consulting them. Here now, 
the, the, the fundamental call of the pastor. I am the good shepherd, says Christ. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. Men and women and le- uh, men in leadership, are you laying down your life for your sheep? That is an incredibly hard statement to consider. Ephesians 5, 22, verse 23. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives. How ought you to love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her? This is not a kingly, you're you're my servant, make me some food. This is, I'm going to be in the kitchen with you. I'm going to be cleaning the bathroom with you. I'm going to be giving my life sacrificially for you. As pastors, we are going to serve the women in the church and care for them that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy or blameless or without blemish. My goodness. Men, pastors have abused um, have abused their wives and we've abused women in the church. Our goal is, is to make it such that they flourish and they become all that they can be beautiful, glorious, using their goal, using their, their talents in the church. And we as pastors have failed women. We have, we have not done as we ought. Last passage here, and then we'll have just a, a closing reflection time and also a time to discuss where we can include the gospel. First Peter 5, 1 and following. So I exhort you elders among you, felder, fellow elder. I exhort you elders among you as a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker that of in the glory that is going to believe. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering. My goodness, we fail. We fail so much. My goodness here. Not domineering, but examples, being gentle. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. We have not loved our wives and our and our women in the church as we ought. And so we are to live sacrificially serving them as leaders, as elders, and as teachers. And so I, this is a call to us to do a better job. Let's go ahead and let's just do a final um, rejoining reflections and thoughts. What are your, ref- I'm going to shut up. What are your reflections and thoughts from this evening? What, what is your follow-up questions or anyone can, can, can input? Well, we've got a, sorry. Sure. Sick, sick, sick. <laughs> And we've got a message from Athena. Uh, okay. Hello, Pastor Tim. I saw a Twitter argument from a woman named Marge Molsko. She made an article about it. That why is it that women can teach children, but they cannot teach men? She argued that if women are more gullible than men, then why are they allowed to teach young children? Yeah, okay. So there's there's two aspects there. There's There's teaching and leading, right? So when you're saying gullible, so teaching and leading... Those are two different aspects, okay? Now, when it comes to the church, both are required for leadership. Are you tracking that with me? So so the gullibleness doesn't necessarily pertain to the teaching, it pertains to the leading. So, and that's why I'm saying that the the teaching and the preaching um, are very specific that's why I'm saying in the in, in a biblical complementarianism, it doesn't mean that women can never teach. It's specifically in church, in, in church at a fundamental level. Athena, does that answer your question, or do you want to do a follow up? And I would also say, when it comes to teaching children, you need gentleness and caring. And so women actually teach children better than men. 
My wife teaches my children better than I teach them. I will try to teach them. And my wife's like, Tim, that doesn't make any sense to them. Re-explain it. Tim, you need to be more patient. So this is, so, so, so I would say women are better at teaching children than men. And at the end of the day, the Lord commands it, right? So if, if there is a perceived contradiction, this is in 1 Timothy 2.15. So if there's a perceived contradiction, then your problem is not with complementarians. Your problem is with Jesus Christ's commands. <laughs> I'm not here I'm not here to try to make logical sense. I'm here to to show consistency within the word of God. And if there's a problem with the logical relationship, then the problem is with the word of God, not with me. According to Athena, yes, Pastor Tim, I think your answer has helped her out. Is it also fair to say that um because, because there are egalitarians that say, "Hey, women can teach as long as they're under the authority of" Yeah. Man, but I would say no. They're they're prohibited from taking authority over a man, but there's no prohibition for them to uh, have authority over children. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, th- there is a clear prohibition on, and again, the corporate teaching of the word that is clear. Now there are some other gray areas outside in small groups. That's not the official, a formal corporate worship setting. And again, you're right. There's no prohibition against teaching women. It's actually commanded. Any, yeah, I think anything? Athena seems settled. Um, Pastor, I have a question though. I, I think this is really. I think this could be related to uh, uh, the church in China, the persecuted yep. church in China. Yep. But in this case, uh, let's say there's a group of churches, and they used to be Pentecostal, Charismatic, so yep. they ordained women pastors and such. Yep. Um, but they recently began to reform. Yep. And so and they're Calvinists, yep. they believe in five solas, they're on their way there. But they still have women pastors who at mm-hmm. least now understand yeah. that they shouldn't be pastoring. Um, yeah. Is it some sort of, uh, would you say that uh, they're not in any presumptuous sinning for as long as they understand that they actually have to already raise a man for ministry, but but we know that they cannot leave just yet because... You know, there has to be a proper transition process. Yeah. And, oh, and I think, go, yeah, I think, I think that's the solution because, and I'll give a situation. I was in a church where it came out that there was really bad practices and the pastor, the, the, the founder of the church had set these bad practices. And then the new pastor was kind of caught in there and there was, they had, they had entertained sin to continue on and on. And then it came out later and, and it was just, it was a terrible situation but it was one of those things where we were serving there and it was like, do you publicly, you know, rebuke or do you privately rebuke or do you just say, hey, this is just a terrible situation. You give your recommendations and then just slowly and quietly, you know, move on to another ministry because, you know, at the end of the day, the, 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 the creation of sin is, um, is due to a, a whole context that is, is incredibly difficult to, to remedy. There is a caring aspect. The other thing, and this is not for tonight. I, I we just cannot. What do you do? And maybe this is for another time. In Africa, when when a polygamist family comes to Christ, and you have two wives that are being cared for by one man, what do you do? Do you do you kick her to the street? There's no way for her to provide. Like so, you know, those type of situations are. Um, and I think that comes back to. We need to be what we need to preach what's prescriptive, but sin is so messy. We need to be careful and gentle in bringing people or bringing a church back into line so that no sheep is lost. And I think that's what you see with with God ordaining and and, and calling Deborah, using women to do incredible work in scripture, because we're just, we are just saturated with sin and and my goodness the problem is with us mankind not with god is that is that helpful is, is that helpful very much so that's actually a wonderful insight that you yeah. said about sin being so pervasive that we have to be gentle to people and to yeah. even certain things thank you so much you're welcome i'm going to add one more thing here and 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 also men struggle with this um pastors shepherds and this is where 
some women can do this, but I, I, it's fair so far. Shepherds need to slay the wolves. And a lot of men fail here. You need to identify yeah. the wolves. You need to identify the wolves. That, bro. And you need to they guess to that. <laughs> and, and that is a shepherd role. And you need the strength to do it. You need the strength because there are some wolves in the flocks. And, and you need to pull out your knife and you need to cut off some heads. And, and that now, when I say that, there needs to be incredible wisdom when you do it, but there are wolves and you need to be unbreakable. And this is where the men's aggressiveness is beneficial. When you see that wolf, you better protect your flock because that wolf will eat your sheep. It will eat your sheep. And Paul actually calls them in Acts 20, fierce wolves that will come in and devour the flock. And so my goodness, this is one of the characteristics. So men that are not, that are not strong should not be in leadership. So there's a lot of men that should not be in leadership because they lack the backbone to stand for truth, to slay the wolves of corrupt culture, to slay the wolves of corrupt, ambitious, narcissistic men in leadership that are looking to, 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 to steal and to take. Um, and so this is really a high calling that God will hold us accountable. And in many ways, women should be thankful that they don't have to do that responsibility because you will lose sleep, you will lose hair, and you will suffer for it. Oh, preach it, brother. Preach My it. Goodness. Amen. Okay. Anyone else want to add? Anyone else well, want to just, add? Just, just, uh, just something on that, along that point, uh, Brother Tim. Yeah. Uh, w what you said right there, uh, the pastor, the leader, the man of God being, you know, willing to take that knife and, you know, like cut the head of the wolf. Yeah. Th th that is uh, particularly something very, very challenging for us Filipinos. Yeah. Because culturally we are a very tender yeah. very kind very forgiving very accepting yes you know um a culture and um wielding the knife is something yeah. that is very very difficult for yeah. um i get called names when i'm being you know i'm called harsh i'm called hard yeah i'm called heartless i'm called unkind you know, no. uh, lacking understanding, unloving. I mean, man, I, I've been called names, man. Yeah. So there I, is I've this, names. there is this incredible challenge to speak the truth in love and, and to always seek reconciliation, always seek reconciliation, but not to compromise truth. And that's, and, and that's why we need to, um, that's why we need to, we have to be focused on, really focused that we don't misunderstand a, a sheep for a wolf. We don't misunderstand a goat for a wolf. You know, you got to care for the goats that are mixed with the sheep, but you got to slay the wolves. And so this is, this takes incredible prayer and fasting and wisdom. So, but it takes, it takes the backbone. And so people are going to call you names, Pastor Glenn. It's, it, it's true. So um, we need to be we, sh we should not wish this upon ourselves, but we should be faithful to what God has called us to do. How does, the, how does, make the comment, then we're going to talk about the gospel. Go ahead. Would you consider this doctrine a matter of, of something that is essential or something secondary? Yeah. Okay. So, so I would say that it's secondary in the sense that people that don't know, so it depends on. It depends on knowing and context, knowing and context. So what I'm saying is um, you have soft, you have, so you have soft, hard, and then like promoting or um, combative. So I would say people that have pastors that are in the lead, lead teaching role, they don't know. That's the context. That that's the Pentecostal. We need to be very generous and and working with them. Someone who you know maybe they have leading women underneath a pastor. I think that's that's more secondary. We don't agree, but we don't cause an issue. Okay, even with the first where they don't know. You know, I would. And if if we have a pastoral come into um, Cloud Theological Institute, I would not refuse her. I would say this is our position. And while you're here, I just act, ask that you respect it. You know, you we could dis, we could discuss. You know, but if 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 you could learn and maybe change or modify or adjust, okay, fine. 
there is then the hard and really the promoting. They're combative. They're saying that the complementarian is not the word of God. You are you are in heresy. And I think it's really in these in these latter areas that we should consider um, separating because, and especially this is concerning a uh, uh, lead pastor, lead pastor. So again, I want to be clear. It's not that I would support these soft or the contextual or, or, or these different things. It's that we need to be very generous and we need to be very reconciliatory. Uh, at the same time, we need to differentiate between that and someone, maybe someone came from, so like, for example, there's, there's, people in so like there's there's women in the SBC that are becoming very strong and combative they're coming out of the the complementarian context and fighting against it and i would say we should separate from them someone who's in a pentecostal or in a context where it's not known they're in a different i think we need to be very generous we need to be very willing to work without compromising i i maybe you don't want to hear that um but but that that's my that's my position um and again maybe your position is different that's completely fine at the end of the day, it's between you and God, and and you're you're accountable to God for that. You know, I, I'm not accountable to your understanding for God unless I'm teaching that. <laughs> any any follow up comments? Okay, just no, just okay. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Let, let's just very briefly, where does the gospel relate here? Where does the how how can the gospel? How can we teach or preach the? If we're preaching this as a sermon, I don't know if you'd ever preach this as a sermon. We should preach. Be willing to preach all of, all of scripture. Um, where does the gospel relate here? How does the gospel come into here? How can we preach the gospel? This is this is fundamental to to Cloud Theological Institute. The gospel is not just for evangelism, but for daily life. So let's let us look at one passage that I would use, and then I'll just share one or two ideas for how we can do it. First uh, Timothy one fifteen. I would use this in preaching the sermon. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. My goodness, as leaders, if you cannot say, I am the foremost sinner, you should not be in leadership. To not be able to see your sin, my goodness. Now, this is not to say that we, we elect um, people that are not blameless in the community or in the church, but it is to say that fundamentally, we are all sinners saved by grace. And in, and in our passage of scripture, in, in, in 1 Timothy 2.14, Adam and the woman brought all of humanity into transgression. Adam was the federal head who brought him in, brought us all in. And we cannot, as men, cannot exercise authority or teach without the gospel forefront and centered that Christ died for our sins and imputes his righteousness on our account so that we stand before God righteous, holy, and blameless, not because of what we've done, but because of what he's done. Women, to be able to submit to, to male leadership, you cannot do that without the work of, of the gospel daily. Men, you cannot lead without daily gospel living. And so I think this is how we can bring the gospel in. And if there's ever a struggle of between male and female genders in the church, if there's ever a struggle of rivalry, the gospel removes it because Christ came to save sinners of whom we are chief. We are all sinners and we should all never to forget that. Let's go ahead and um, any last comments or questions? Any last comments or questions? Dear Heavenly Father, I ask a blessing upon each one here. May your grace fill them. May your spirit bring them to a proper interpretation and understanding of the Word of God, Father. May we set aside our preconceived notions, and may we let the Word of God speak. Father God, may we also cling to those truths and stand firm in the midst of a changing culture and society, Father. And lastly, may we never forget that we are sinners saved by grace and that we, we should empathize and relate to the sinner in our midst. May we slay the, the wolf. May we care for the flock. May we lead our families and train the next generation. Now may the love of the Heavenly Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our great shepherd, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who brings us together and gives us a new heart be with you all this evening. Amen and go in the grace and the peace of the triune God.